Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. It's kind of funny. I always say good afternoon because it's afternoon here. But you, the tribe, being all over the world, it's not always afternoon. Could be good morning, good evening, good middle of the night. You know, there's so many different times. I have ice cubes in here because it's hot in Portland, so I'm having iced coffee in my thermos today, in case you saw that little block come out of there. But I still have to have my coffee. Still have to caffeinate myself to keep up with you and to enjoy my afternoon. How are you all doing? Have you had a good week so far? It's Wednesday, hump day, halfway through. I've got some salal I'm going to work with. Now, if you were here last week, you saw teacher Michelle and she was talking about designing flowers for the horses in parades. Now this year, a lot of the parades are canceled, if not all of them, most of them. Things are canceled, things are set aside, things are delayed, postponed, with no real planned date for renewal. It's kind of a scary year. But the reality is it will come back. There will be a time. And so this is the perfect time to prepare ourselves for when it happens. Get education, learn a new technique, make connections, build upon our skill base, and that's what we're going to do today again. So we're going to look at pageants, parades, coronations, how to do the bouquets for a presentation. Somebody asked that last week. They said, well, I wish you would do pageant bouquets. And I thought, well, duh, we are, because this week in Portland, the queen is going to be crowned, the queen of Rosaria. The Portland Rose Festival was delayed. Much of it is canceled until next year. Uh, the parade didn't happen. We had a virtual parade. It was really kind of fun uh, where they did it on the internet, just as we all are doing these days, changing things around. But the coronation, they didn't want to do it virtually. They wanted to have a live coronation, so they delayed it. And even with the delay, it's going to be very small. And the added bonus, it is going to be televised. So if you are interested, you can see the coronation and see the bouquets that we created for the pageant, for the coronation of the princesses to the queen. Um, it will be on Saturday, and I know that Caledonia and Susie are both out there, and they have a link they'll post for you so that if you want to see the flowers, see the coronation, you can watch it on TV. And uh, it'll be a wonderful opportunity. I'm going to be there. They're going to do it actually twice, Saturday and Sunday. So you can look at the link, and if Saturday doesn't work for you, maybe catch it on Sunday. The demonstration I'm going to do today, I'm going to use roses, so I'll get these out. While I'm pulling all my materials and gathering things and getting them ready, I've got Marisa and Carolyn in the studio with me. Carolyn's back. I know a lot of you knew she wasn't in the studio. She was working from home, but now she's here with us. So we've got Carolyn and Marisa in the studio. They're watching you on YouTube, watching you on Facebook, and they'll be verbalizing to me when all is happening. And while you're working, remember if you're on your phone, turn it sideways. A little bit of housekeeping here. The picture will be bigger. If the comments are in your way, you can swipe. Go to silent mode. That way you don't have to see the comments. You can just see the picture. Or hold it upright. That way the comments stay on the bottom. If you're on your computer or an iPad, you can go to full screen. If you're on your TV, I'm probably larger than life. That's always kind of intimidating to me to think about those of you watching it on TVs because high definition and large screen, oh my gosh, that just makes me nervous. So I'm gonna keep pulling materials. What's going on out there? Well, I see lots of tulips on Facebook. Let's see, we'll start off with Therese up in Vancouver who just signed back up for the Flower Lovers Club yesterday. And Rochelle, thank you for the gifts, Rochelle. Oh, Rochelle, I love my thank socks. You. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is I I like to wear socks. I wear socks 
even to bed sometimes because they're just sort of comforting to me. So if I'm not sleeping well, I put socks on and I always sleep well. And so that was a wonderful gift. Thank you. I appreciate it. And the keeps, list keeps going. We have Scott and Arthur, Pamela, Penny, Nikki, who is a recent FDI graduate, Sharon, Jim, Jennifer, Kim. Oh my gosh, I wrote down dinner because uh, Donna is having dinner in Canada, so I wrote down dinner. Um, <laughs> What's for dinner, Donna? <laughs> um, Nina, Renee, Chris, uh, Beatrice, David, Elisa, who is also a recent graduate, Molly and Gayla. Wow, this is great. Carolyn, what have you got over on your We've side? We've lots of Tulip Tribe um, on YouTube. Leslie, Vicki, Andrea, Rose, Wayne, Janet, Selma, Garrett, Elena, and Elsa. Grand. So if you haven't introduced yourself yet, please do let us know where you're from. That way the whole tribe can see and you guys can start connecting. I know people have connected, some have received employment, some have gotten orders, some have gotten shared friendships, hugs from afar. So make sure you let us know where you're from. If you're part of the tribe, put your tulip in. And then that always brings up the question, who is in the tribe? The tribe are our students, our graduates, and the members of the Flower Lovers Club, because you are the tribe that supports free education and keeps the Floral Design Institute surviving. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't get to do this. So thank you to the tribe. Be proud, put your tulip there. That helps us to know you're here and we can connect with you because we go back and look at the comments as well. So be sure to show where you're from, put your tulip in, I'm going to need to use several different types of foliage. When I do um, any bouquet, I always tell people use at least three types of foliage. And many of you know that from the classes. We teach that in basic design, advanced design, wedding class, anything. I'm always saying three types of foliage. When I do a presentation bouquet, I think that's even more important because it adds interest, depth, contrast, and then enhances the overall harmony of the design. So it really answers a lot of your elements and principles. So I'm going to use some aspidistra, but I don't want all of it drapey. Some of it I want to just kind of loop. So what I'll do is bring it, just kind of fold it into a loop, and then staple it to hold it into place, just like that, because that'll give me some dimension in the bouquet. Now, you don't have to do this. You could use it plain. But it, I think it's kind of fun to add interest to the design so that people look at it more closely. They don't see it as just a, a wad of roses. No, there's nothing wrong with a wad of roses. A wad of roses can be pretty fun. But when you add a little creative flair, it's just so much better. So I always go through and get all my materials ready first. So I'm getting some of these looped and ready to use. Then I'll use some natural. I won't fold them. I'll leave them extended. But some I'll go just like so, getting them in here. Then stretching it back out so that I've got room. The roses, I've already removed all the thorns. I took those off ahead of time so I didn't have to worry about it. Marisa, what you have there? Oh my gosh, so Brooke, who is a recent uh, student of ours, so she just said she interviewed for a full designer position for the first time today. Her design test was brutal, but thanks to us, FDI, um, she knew the basis, basis and helped her out tremendously. So fingers crossed. Oh, grand. Congratulations. Job interviews are scary. Oh, so scary. Eucalyptus, isn't that a beautiful variety? I like the drapiness of it and the softness. It'll change the perspective of the design. So when I choose my foliages, I choose different varieties so that some are long and hard and smooth. Some are drapey and smaller leaved and some might be rough so that there's texture involved. Breaking them apart, making sure that my lower leaves are removed so that the stems will stay bare. Okay. Now, if you know someone that is working in a store or would like to work in a store, 
that needs to know how to do presentation bouquets, tag them. You go ahead and just kind of add in the comments, tag their name, or share this video, share it out, that way more people can join us. We can expand the tribe. You know, the more the merrier. We always want as many people as possible to join us because we're all sharing then the value and love of education and we all grow together. So take a moment, if you haven't done so already, and share this video or tag a friend so that we can get the message out there. Now, those of you that have taken basic floral design or advanced floral design, you recognize this, laying things out, organizing them. Those of you that cook, you may think of it as doing all your prep, where you have a bowl of onions, a bowl of garlic, a bowl of mushrooms, a bowl of this, that, and the other thing, so that then when you go to cook, you just dump your bowls in and it makes it so easy. It's the same thing when you're working with flowers. I'm going to have one more foliage here, some myrtle. So that way I have actually four types of foliage. I have salal with its large, you know, broad leaf. Then I have the eucalyptus with its draping qualities. I have the aspidistra, which has that long, heavy, broad leaf that I can then manipulate into the curls. And then I have myrtle, which can give me a structural backbone. And what I'm going to do with the myrtle actually pull off the lower laterals. Leanne? Yes, Marisa. Do you happen to know what those orange roses are? We have a lot of people asking. I don't. Do you know? I do. Oh, <laughs> yay. Oh, my gosh. Thank goodness. I, I looked up from last week. Uh, <laughs> um, excuse me. High magic. High magic. And then do you know the variety of that eucalyptus? I do not. So do you have that on I there, don't. too? Don't okay. Some people tell me it's like feather eucalyptus, but feather eucalyptus is usually smaller than this, but it has that same long extended draping leaf. Um, so I don't believe it's feather, but it could be related to feather. So I don't know the variety on the eucalyptus. High magic on the roses. Now, one tip for those of you doing work for presentations, pageants, that type of design. You want to get your roses opened out and beautiful before you start designing. Because if you don't, they just look like beady little heads. You don't have as much value. So you definitely want to let them open, let them be a little fuller, get that full look. You can blow on them, you can open them out more, but key is to have them open so that they're gorgeous. So now I have four foliage, some myrtle, some aspidistra, some eucalyptus, some salal, high magic roses, and I'm just about ready to design. Now again, if you've got questions, type it in there. Caledonia and Susie are there. They'll greet you. They'll answer if they can. Marisa and Carolyn in here, they will shout it out and make sure that I answer. If you're part of the tribe, put your tulip in. If you're not part of the tribe, make sure and at least introduce yourself. And then lastly, if you're a first timer, let us know so that the tribe can welcome you. You'll find that this is a really supportive, grand group. So now I have everything laid out. I'm sort of ready to go. And I start with the back the backbone of the bouquet. And when you're doing presentation, they're also known as arm bouquets. So when you're doing an arm bouquet or a presentation bouquet, you assume the person's right-handed because more people are right-handed. If you know the person you're giving it to and it's just one person and you know they're left-handed, you could do the reverse. But if you're making several for a group, you still want them all to be on the right so that when they hold them in the photograph, they're all going the same direction. So unfortunately, the left-handed person has to pretend to be a right-handed person at that point. So you set it so that it's going to drape over their arm like so. And they don't hold it like this. They hold it like this so that it just kind of cups in their hand. It's very graceful. 
It's the perfect way to do it for a pageant or a parade because where they're having to hold it for a long time, they can drape it across their body, let it just sit, and the arm doesn't get tired. Whereas if they were holding it like this, the arms get tired. So it really is much more graceful and easier on the body to just let it drape. So I'm putting it like so. Then I might take an aspergistra leaf and put that with it to create a little bit of depth. Maybe another to let it drape a tiny bit. And then a little bit of the eucalyptus to let that drape. And in doing so, I'll stand on my tiptoes so I'm bringing it up a little higher. In doing so, you can see how it comes and just starts draping down the arm. My hand's just holding it like so. You can, as you're working, especially if you have a lot of them to do, lay it out on a table just like that. That way everyone will end up looking the same because you lay them out and you start assembling them, clearing this out so that you can see a little better. You can lay them out just setting them on the table like that. Go back, add in some of the salal, laying that in place. And that starts the dimension. Then going back with some roses, laying one, laying another. And starting to just lay them like this because that gives you the control you need. And I'm going to pick it up and bring it up where you can see it this way. Adjusting them, making them a little longer. You want it to be very, very dramatic and elegant. So you can see how it's going to lay on the arm. The backbone of foliage helps to support the roses. That's why you put that there. It protects it from the arm and the heat of the body. So you put that all in there and it just holds it together. Now a tip, if you're doing a really large bouquet, and this one's going to be really large, you saw how many roses I set out there. I like to give myself a little more control. So as I put things in and I start, like I have here, then I stop. And using a little bit of bind wire, I secure it so that that top portion is stable. It's supported together. So I just kind of hold it together like this, then bringing some of the bind wire around. So it's similar to doing a hand tie bouquet where you might lash it off in between stages when it's a little too big to hang on to. It's the same thing. It's just different in that you're leaving it flat on one side so that it can lay against the arm rather than doing it fully rounded. But you're doing that same structural stability. Now I can always go back, give it a tug and another tug and adjust a little bit. But the top I try to just leave fairly tight because if it's too loose as the roses dehydrate, they'll go limp and they'll droop too much. But if they're massed together, they support each other, so it holds it in place. So that's the top of the bouquet. Then you just go on forward with the rest of it. So, And that sounds like I'm oversimplifying. You just go on forward with the rest of it. That's really how simple it is. Thinking about the fact that this side stays somewhat flat because it's going to go against the body. This side stays flat. And this side can be drapey and flowy and big and you can start getting dimension coming outward to make it even more lovely. But this portion just stays as is for the time being. And you can see I can pull it way up if I want to make it really huge and hold it down here. And this is still stable to support themselves to stay upright. And you can adjust. I could always go back and add another myrtle if I wanted because I kind of feel like I want something right there. I could always go back and add a little more eucalyptus. I don't like that piece, so that's not the piece I'm going to add. Here's a nice, yeah, I'm not going to add another eucalyptus right now. I think I'll just leave it with that myrtle. 
and I'm going to lock that in place because then I'll start going on and building. While I lock this, Marisa, Carolyn, what's going on? Okay, so thanks to Jason, Lori, and Luann, that is actually Willow Eucalyptus. Okay, thank you to the tribe. We all learn from each other. Thank you for sharing that with me. So now I know I'm using Willow Eucalyptus. Bless the tribe. You know, I am always so happy when I learn from you and when we learn from each other because it really shows how the world should work, supporting each other as we all grow together. So Carolyn, what have you got? Yeah, Mark has a great question. She's wondering if you would put filler flower in at the top or are you going to maybe do it later as a present in the whole presentation, okay? If you're going to use baby's breath or filler or wax flower, heather, whatever variety, you would include it in the top. I'm not going to. I'm using my willow eucalyptus as my filler as opposed to adding in something. If I was going to have a filler, like I've got a little baby's breath here, I would have included that up there as well and then lash that in because whatever you put in the body of the bouquet, you do want a little bit at the top so that it looks unified top to bottom. You don't want to all of a sudden just start with something you hadn't included before. Now the exception would be if you did all your bouquet and then at the focal emphasis area added something unique that you could do because then it makes sense. But if you're going to do filler throughout, make sure you include some at the top as well. So, good question. So I'm going to go ahead now and continue building. The next thing that I want to kind of point out is the need for some substance so that it doesn't get flat. And one thing you can do is turn your foliage sideways because when it's sideways, it adds dimension. And that's what I use for the Aspidistra as well. See how that immediately adds some dimension there? Oops, that one came apart, so we won't use that one right now. But by adding it with that loop, it adds in dimension. And that way, when I come back and add more roses, it gets fuller, more dramatic. And I can just lay it on my arm. and then keep adding in the blooms. And while you're placing those in, shout out to uh, Mary. Uh, it's her first time joining us today. Hi, Mary. Welcome to Flower School Live. We do this every Wednesday. It's a lot of fun. It's a chance to get together with like-minded people, learn, be part of a larger community, and grow, bringing out a long leaf to get some movement, the eucalyptus to get some movement. And you can see how I'm getting more depth going on here. I can come up with some roses that are a little over the top. And coming on down. Then another question for you, and I'm wondering if you know this one, by any chance, do you know how many varieties of eucalyptus there are? Oh, I don't, but I do know it's hundreds of thousands. Well, that's probably an exaggeration. But there are so many varieties of eucalyptus, it's absolutely amazing. So I really don't know how many there are for real. That's probably a Wikipedia question um, that would be able to give you a little better answer than I could. But, uh, yeah, they are... There are so many, and with it being such in style, we're seeing more and more varieties of it available. And you can see I'm just kind of adjusting things in my arm, and then periodically going back and adding more things that drape, because the draping makes it more beautiful as they carry it. Now, I would tend to work with a mirror so that you could stand and look to see how it's coming together. Is everything in the place that you want it to be? Because if you don't look in a mirror, sometimes it just looks a little wonky when you're going. Then I'm running out of 
the ability to hold everything. So I go back and I bind it again using a bit of bind wire. So again, I'm going to say one more time. It's just like a hand tie. If you've been to flower school, you know that we teach this in basic and advanced, different versions of a hand tie bouquet. The difference is I'm doing it flat, not round. So those of you that have been to school, you have the skill. You just needed to learn a little new technique for the skill so that that way you can do it. If you've not been to school, come join us. There's so much more to learn, way more than we could ever do on a live. So you could come join us in flower school. I'm going to keep adding more things in here. Carolyn, Marisa, what else is going on? That's another great question from Marsh. She's wondering if you wanted to cascade it down over the arm, what mechanic, if any, would you use? If you're going to need to cascade it down the arm, I would look for cascading materials. You know, like a dendrobium orchid would drape nicely, um, spirea. Then if you did not want to have a draping material or if you needed a material like the roses, you might have to wire them to get them to come out. But you can also many times just have it angle more, like I did that one, angling outward so that it gives a little more movement that direction. I have a couple questions over here, Leanne. Okay. Um, well, first, um, Nikki found that there is over 700 varieties of eucalyptus. Thanks, Nikki. <laughs> so over 700 varieties of eucalyptus. That's kind of amazing. Thank you, Nikki, for sharing that. And then um, we're wanting to know, would you make these the day of the event? No, <laughs> because the day of the event, if anything goes wrong, you can't fix it. And so all of a sudden, you're backing yourselves into a corner, and I don't like that. So I always do these a day before the event, just to be safe. And in fact, tomorrow is the coronation, like I said, of the Portland, Oregon Rose Festival Princess, and well, the queen will be coronated from the um, princesses, there are 15 princesses, and then one will become queen tomorrow. And we always do the flowers for that. And people say, well, why are you doing that? Why is that your job? And it's one of our community outreach things because I think it's vitally important that every company support their community. No matter what you do, some way or another, support your community. And I believe in the Rose Festival program because it's women supporting women. Now we have men too. We are not an all-female company. There are men involved and there are men students and all of that. But predominantly, we're a female company because I'm a female, I run a company, and so I look for other women to support. And the princesses are female, and it's a, a women's organization. So I feel like it's women supporting women. And the main purpose, in my opinion, of the whole program, and for the girls to be involved with it, is that there's a $3,500 scholarship for each and every girl, not just the queen, every single princess gets a $3,500 scholarship. So by supporting this program, we're supporting our community, we're supporting women, we're supporting education. So it made so much sense for us to do that. And we, um, it was Carolyn and Marisa today, made all the bouquets, got everything ready. In the past, we've had our students do it. And we did it as part of class, which was always great fun for them. And the students made the bouquets, and we got to take pictures of all the students with their princess bouquets. This year, since it was postponed, and we don't have an in-person class, we just did it within the teachers, but I still felt it was vitally important that we do that. So we did, I'm, I'm gonna count real quick, three, six, 9, 12, 15, 18, 19, 20. So I should add four more roses to make it two dozen. What do you think? Do you like that? 
I'll turn it sideways so you can see how it's very flat on this side because that's where it's going to be against the body. And then this side is a little fuller because that's where it's going to drape outward. Oops, there goes my clippers. And then it's also draping in the front. So I need to add four more roses to get it to be two dozen. And I'm thinking, whoa, where am I going to put four more roses? What am I thinking? But you know what? We'll bring them in kind of low so that it pulls the eye back inward. One, two. So that we come down a little bit and then maybe out over to the side so we get a little fuller yet. Three. And then one more here, four. And then a little bit more salal. And a little more bind wire. Whoops. Lost a bit of salal. So I get it all lashed together, making sure and remove my lower leaves. I don't want those to be in the way. Over there. And maybe an aspidistra. And shout out to Sherry. I think she watches us um, when it's after live because this is the first time she's actually joining us, watching us live. You know, it's so true. Many of you are not able to join us during the actual live time, and so you catch it on replay, which works too. But it is fun to be live because then you can actually ask questions and meet the rest. If you can't watch us live, although you are, but if you ever are not able to, we do keep it on YouTube and on Facebook. It's always there, we don't delete them, so that you can go back and watch it whenever you have the opportunity. And that way you don't have to miss out because there's always so much to learn. So now I've got this done. I'm going to go back now and clip the ends, show you how to finish it off. You don't want all these stems. This is too much. So while I'm clipping, you guys tell me what else is going on. Yeah, we have a lot of questions wondering where we hold our in-person classes. Ah, in-person is right here in Portland, Oregon. And we're in a beautiful part of Northwest Portland. Um, it's an old, old neighborhood that's also part of the city now. Uh, it used to be just residential, then it was industrial. And now it's a wonderful mixed use area with housing, apartments, condos, restaurants, grocery stores, you know, all the everything. We have lodging right here. It's so convenient. We're on the light rail line so that if you um, come in from out of town, you don't have to worry about a car. You can just take the light rail and our light rail is very safe, very wonderful. Okay, so now I've got everything together. I oftentimes will take a second bit of bind wire and lash the stems again so that they aren't hanging out quite so far. So I'll take and just add a little more and then I go back and do the bow. So yes, we are right here in Portland, Oregon with the in-person classes. We have been closed due to the pandemic, but the plan is to reopen in September which we were full and we just um, ended up with one person who transferred to online because they decided they didn't want to wait till September. They wanted to get started now. And I'm like, fine, join us online. And so we have one space left in the September class if you are interested in that. And then there's about three spaces left in the October class and then we're done for the year. We won't have any more. But online is open for a registration right now too. I know I've been doing a shout out to several people that joined us online and it's been so fun. And I wanna say a thank you to the tribe that when they see that I've done a shout out to somebody joining us for the live, that they turn around and say, welcome. So Heather, Rochelle, Jim, Scott, Joy, Julie, Karen. And I made myself a list. Jeannie, Wendy, Donna, Beatrice, Jennifer, Lori, Therese, Sue, Lisa, Garrett, Janet, and I'm sure I missed some. But thank you, because taking that time to welcome the newest members of the tribe, 
just warms my heart. It makes their day, it makes me so happy, and it shows how supportive you all are of each other. So thank you so much, I appreciate that. Because I know it takes time, it's hard. I know sometimes for me, just to get in there and get the picture picked and figure it out and get it posted and do a shout out to thank you, sometimes I'm like, oh, I just don't have time. It's like, I don't not have time. I have to do that. So now I'm taking a bit of ribbon and I'm going to fold it in half and then cut to the fold and that gives me a lovely dovetail which just looks more finished, more polished. Okay, and I need a second piece. Then I go back and when I'm doing a bow for a presentation bouquet, I get kind of crazy and make it really big. Um, and if you don't like bows well, then presentation bouquets might not be your thing. But I think it's kind of cool to make them big. Leaving streamers, I oftentimes will make a center loop. Now when we teach bow tying, we do it with lip center loop, without a center loop. There's so many different techniques. And really it depends on what you like the best. But for presentation, I like the center loop. Then I scrunch it together and give it a little twist so that the pretty side is out everywhere. So scrunch and twist. Then I start making loops and I start small. Now ironically, I'm doing a more classic old fashioned bow here. The new version is much drapier, loopier, flowing, softer. Um, it's going back retro where before we had wired ribbon, we had double-sided satin ribbon. And so you would have these loopy, droopy, lacy bows that just kind of were graceful and draped. If you look back at the pictures from like the 20s, 30s, 40s, you'll see that ribbon where it just drapes down in showers of ribbon. So that's really more on trend right now. But the classic with the great, big, heavy, loopy bowl is still there. And you know what, I kind of like it. I know it sounds sort of weird. It's like, really, do you like it? I, I kind of do. It's kind of like, ooh. So I've got that. Then I go back and give it a cut. And then one set of tails is never enough. So I go back and just take and tuck it in. Add another set. Then I don't want a wire in here because I don't want anything that can poke anybody. So I take that ribbon that I started with and I feed it through, slide it under my thumb, bring it around to the back, and then tying it, pulling it through, pulling it tight, straightening it out, this one got a little cattywampus. Where is it? There we go. Pull it that way. Then pulling taut. Other questions while I get this bow done? Yeah, Ruth is curious where she can find the information about our online classes. Ah, the online classes. There's so many. It's just kind of amazing. We've been having so much fun with the online. Caledonia, Susie, if you'll put the link in to the online classes. Um, and then if you just go to flowerschool.com and click classes, it takes you there. But it's even easier if Caledonia and Susie put the link in for you because then you can just go and take a look. So now I'm going to pull this up and tie the bow around because my goal is to conceal all of the bind wire. I don't want that to show. And while I'm doing that, Marisa, Carolyn, what else is going on? Um, I'm not sure if you're going to talk about this or show it, but I have a few people wanting to know how you're going to keep the stems hydrated since all the stems are at different lengths. You know what? I don't care. No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my end. I do care about that. Where's my end? There it is. Okay. Um, what I would do, I'll show you how that is done. First off, okay, maybe I should, let's talk about this all at once. Okay, before I tie the bow on. If I was doing this the day ahead like we do, and I've got this cut, but there are different lengths of stems, 
But the reality is most of the roses are in this lower portion from like here down. So I would just set it in a bucket of water all the way up to here and it'll be just fine. They'll be totally fine. Up to here, bucket of water, because these were fully hydrated before I began. Set them in the flower cooler. The reality is it's going to last three or four days and be beautiful as long as it's in the flower cooler. Key is that you fully hydrated your roses, that you give it a fresh cut, put it in fresh water, keep it cold, it'll be just fine. Then, after you take it out of the bucket, then you would add your ribbon, and now it's going to be without water because you don't want to get your whole ribbon wet. You can put water up to the lower portion, but you don't want to put it up where the ribbon is because you don't want to damage that. So then my ribbon, I use that piece that I tied with, and I just bring it around, and then bring it back around, and then when I get it to the bottom, I flip all those extra tails up, out of the way, and then tying snugly, and again, and then, if I wanted to make it even more glamorous, take a little more ribbon, So yes, it's a lot of yardage of ribbon, so you need to make sure you charge for that. And if you want to know how much it costs, I'm not going to answer that because how much it costs is going to vary depending on what you paid. If you're a member of the Flower Lovers Club, you can look in there. There are three different pricing formulas you can take a look at that can help you understand. If you've been to flower school, you know we cover pricing. It's all in there. But the key is to figure out what you spent. So measure your ribbon, how much ribbon did you use, what did you pay per yard, and then mark that up. What did you pay for your foliages and for your roses, mark that up, and add in for your labor, and then that's the price you would sell it for. So it's just exactly like we teach you in flower school. There's nothing new there, all the same. Coming down now, I've got to make sure I go back and cut my ribbons that I haven't cut yet, so that all the dovetails are beautiful. And while I'm hunting my dovetails, Marisa, Carolyn, what else? Okay, so here's a double question. We are wanting to know if you would use floral netting to create this bouquet and even a bridal bouquet holder. I would not use a bridal bouquet holder because um, it doesn't hold in an arm as well. If you had super fragile flowers, I'd make an arm bouquet with most of it and then maybe add a holder in that would be okay but as far as the main bouquet i would not use a holder um, as far as floral netting you could i just you have to be very very careful that none of the netting is exposed in any way because if it were to snag on their gown or get caught on like in the rose festival with the princesses the queen was going to have this huge cape it's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And if there was any wire that got snagged on that, well, it would break my heart because the value of that one-of-a-kind cape that's been used all through history, I do not have the right to damage that. And none of us want to see that happen. So we've got to be very, very careful. So we don't do wire for our presentation bouquets. I just don't think it's a wise choice. So now you can see two dozen roses, pretty dramatic, pretty fabulous. But you know what? It's easy to carry. So I've just got it draped on my arm, my hands here, and it just balances. I could carry this all day long and feel like a queen and not have a tired arm. And it's all because of the structure of how it's built. So it's actually quite easy, quite, quite easy. And then, so that's the first one. Now I'm going to do another one that is done presentation style, like you see in the UK. I have a friend, her name is Rosie, and she was the bouquet maker to the queen. Yes, the queen of England. And she made bouquets 
Tussie Mussies for her all the time. And those presentation bouquets are far different. They're not like this. This is a presentation bouquet common in the United States for pageant work. So you may have seen that. But it's not necessarily the bouquet that everybody uses. I can go back and kind of move things around a bit. We'll look at it in the mirror later and double check it. The other beauty of doing them this way is it sits nicely. And I can go back and tuck these and let it sit. Isn't that beautiful? Just kind of sits there nicely all by itself. Get that, touch back in there a little and more. Everyone on YouTube is complimenting you on that you coordinate with the color of roses. That was planned. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I knew what color I had, so when I got dressed, I was going through my closet. I was like, okay, what can I do to match? So, and notice the little glittery things? I thought that looked like royalty, you know, little glittery. I thought that was kind of fun. But anyway, enough. So you can just lay it. And when we do the coronation in Portland on a regular time, they set all the chairs up and they put all the bouquets on the chairs. So they have to look pretty when they sit like this. Then they have to look beautiful when the girls are holding them. And then during the parade, they have to be comfortable to be held for almost three hours. Yeah. That's why it's so important how you make these bouquets to make sure that they hold up well and do a good job. So next what I'm going to do is more like Rosie would do, a bouquet presentation style appropriate for a queen. I still use lots of different foliage, so I've got some salal here. And if you have not shared this video, please do share it out, spread the word. We love to have new people join us. We love to have people know about the Floral Design Institute. And it's through you that we can. It's that supportive community that's so vitally important. For this one, I thought I'd stick with red and orange, which also matches my outfit. And I've got two different types of red spray roses. I don't know the varieties, but one's a darker red and one is a lighter red. And then an orange, deep, deep, orange rose, which I'm going to take off and fluff out a bit. I don't want all the guard petals there. I did already remove the thorn, so that's all done, okay? And I don't worry about all of the guard petals because they add sort of character to it as well. Now we have another thing going on that I want to share with you while I'm getting this ready. There's a new reality show that is casting right now. Now, I don't know if you are interested in reality shows or not. Some of you may have seen The Flower Fight on Netflix. If you haven't, you might want to. It's kind of interesting to see how people can use organic floral product. A lot of it was plants, and so some people are like, well, where are the flowers? But you know what? It doesn't matter. It was very cool to see what people could do and all of the artistic steps that were done with plant material. Well, there's a new reality show that's casting right now, and they contacted us. They called Marisa, and then they sent me an email, and they said, do you know anybody that wants to? And I said, well, I'll spread the word. Don't know who does. But it's a topiary style. So topiary, thinking garden and plants, but they're also looking for floral. So I don't know exactly what it is they're looking for, but if you are interested, um, Caledonia and Susie can put the email up there that uh, you would contact the email. You don't contact us. We have no say in it. I don't know how they're choosing, so don't contact us. We can't help you. We don't know anything. Don't call us. But it would be very cool if it was somebody from the tribe or some buddies, several of you from the tribe, that ended up on TV. Would that not be the coolest? I don't know what station. I don't know when it's happening. I don't know anything other than they are casting. So go ahead and click on that email and contact them. Let them know we sent you because they um, came to us to get this recommendation. So let them know we sent you. Say, you know what, the Flow Design Institute told me you are casting and I want to do this. And then you have to promise me if you do it, 
that you'll come join me live in the studio to talk about it because you've got to tell the tribe what happened. So now I've got some um, aspidistra that I stapled, salal, and I'm using some fatsia this time. And I start by just gathering some in my hand and I'm taking both of the reds so that I get that color contrast. Notice that? Then tucking in some leaves. Leanne, I want to make a comment on what Catherine said since she was speaking of reality shows. She says the live stream is the only reality show she watches. You know, and it is a reality show because things go wrong. Um, I was struggling a little bit today as I was trying to get everything situated because it's so hot here that some of the internet things are just not working the way they're supposed to. You know how that just the world doesn't, doesn't want to play nice sometimes. And so I was getting very frustrated and I actually put together a backup plan. Okay, if something goes wrong, this is what we're going to do. But luckily nothing went wrong and we're here, we're alive. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Very and, fun. And then shout out to uh, Dennis for actually helping me because he's actually answering all the questions that everyone's uh, asking us here on Facebook. Well, thank you, Dennis. That's great. You know, that's what I love is everybody helps. Now, some of you um, graduates, some of the graduates and students and Flower Lovers Club members are part of our private group that we have on Facebook. We have the Tulip Tribe private group that's limited to um, students, you know, it's not open to the public. It's just students, graduates, and Flower Lovers Club members. And people will post questions there and say, hey, what about, how do I do this, and what do you think? And everybody helps each other, and it just makes my heart sing. Because if we don't help each other, what good is living? You know, there's really plenty of business for all of us. And if we take the time to help each other, it betters all of us. And so I'm just really thrilled. So thank you, Dennis, for answering questions. And anybody else that has information to share, please feel free to do so. We welcome that. Any last questions? Well, I have one. Uh, Arthur actually wants to know the orange uh, bouquet that you just made. Uh, are those ever, have you ever done, or are those something that you do for a wedding? Is arm bouquets, wedding? yes. You know, it's kind of interesting because arm bouquets went out of favor, and you only saw them for pageant work. That was really the only place they were used was recitals for children, you know, when they would do a recital, or at the ballet, sometimes people would have pageant bouquets for something like that. But you really didn't see them done for wedding work for a lot of years. And now, they're coming back in style. But that makes sense, because what is old is new again. Everything kind of evolves. So yes, arm bouquets, pageant bouquets, could certainly be done with that in mind. OK, so now, presentation style done in the rounder, a collar of the fatsia. Leanne, shout out to Pat and Lisa, um, who both, um, it looks like uh, due to life changes, they're no longer in the floral business, but still love to watch our video. So thank you. Thank you for watching. You know, once you're a florist and in the flower business, you're a florist forever. You may not do it commercially, but it's still a part of your soul. You know, it was interesting because I couldn't figure out why I was feeling agitated. Things just weren't right at home. Things were not, things weren't perfect. And I was just, I was fussing and I couldn't figure it out. And I was like, what is wrong? Because life just wasn't perfect. And then I realized I had no flowers in the house. There were no flowers in my house. And I have to have flowers. Always I have to have flowers. And so I took flowers home and instantly everything's better. It's those little things. You know, if you have flowers in your soul, you can't give it up. So you may not be a florist at the moment, but you're still a florist. You still are. So now I've got it all in there. I'm going to go ahead and cut the stems down, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to collar this, just to make it even more special for a presentation. 
a little different technique. All right, because a lot of people are asking about that technique that you're going to add to this one. <laughs> and then also, um, Leanne Kim, who is a recent graduate of ours, um, she actually did a presentation style bouquet for a wedding recently. The bride was in a wheelchair, and that was the easiest way for her to hold it. So true. You know, if they are differently abled, that is just the most perfect thing because it would drape so beautifully over their lap. That's brilliant. I love that. You know, it just, there's always a way. It's just you have to think creatively. Okay, so now I've got it as a stand-up hand tie. We'll see if it stays put. Ah, um, but rather than a regular bow and lots of streamers, to keep it a little bit more controlled, I have this super big ribbon. I'm just going to cut it off of the bolt. Okay. Is the rich brown, just gorgeous. Then it's wired, so I take the wire on each side and give it a little tug, and then I twist that together because I don't want that to come out. So I'm twisting that, just kind of winding it on itself, okay? And that also just kind of seals that end off just a tiny bit so I've got that extra wire. Then I go to the opposite side. Okay. Now some of you are already in flower school, and I thank you for that. Some of you are not yet. I'm looking for a little bit of a glue dot. I know I had some up here. Oh, I see it. I dropped it on the floor. I'm using a U-glue dash on the opposite end to make sure that this wire doesn't pull through. I don't want to lose this end, so I'm just putting a glue dash right there taking the wire around, putting it down to that, and then folding it over so that that's just going to lock that in place. It's just going to secure it. Then the last bit, so these two I lashed together just to get them controlled. This one I secured so it can't come through. Then this, I just start gathering. Just shove it on down. And just keep going. Now I really hope that Valerie is still watching because she just said that white ribbon really scares her. Oh, okay. Well, Valerie, don't be scared of white ribbon. It's it just takes a little practice. Well, sometimes a lot of practice, but you know, if you could do it right the first time easily every time, then it probably isn't that hard and everybody could do it. So then what makes you unique and special? You know, I was watching a TV show yesterday uh, that was kind of interesting and I thought, oh, that's just fascinating. But it was um, a documentary, not a full documentary, but a little blurb about Tom Hanks and when he did the movie Mr. Rogers, you know, in the neighborhood movie. And I don't know how many of you have seen that. I was able to see it for the first time just two weeks ago. So it's brand new in my repertoire. I know it's been out forever, but I hadn't seen it. But Tom Hanks, when he filmed the Mr. Rogers movie, and you know at the very beginning when Mr. Roger always comes in and he changes his shoes and ties his tennis shoes? They had to film that scene 27 times. He didn't get it right the first time. Didn't get it right the second time. Didn't get it right the third time. He had to film that scene of taking his shoes off, putting on the tennis shoe, and tying the laces 27 times. And you know, when you don't get it right the first time, remember that. Nobody gets things right the first time all the time. Sometimes it works and you go, oh my gosh, that was so easy and so perfect and I love it. And other times it doesn't work. Other times 
it takes 27 times. So if bows give you craziness, or if taping a wire gives you craziness, don't worry about it. Practice another time. See how it is this time. Because maybe you needed one more time to get it right. And sometimes it takes 27 more times to get it right. But if you really want it, and you really want to master it, you can do it. I believe in you. I know you can. And if you can't, come to flower school. We'll make sure you can because that's our job to help you do it. Well, here's and a do it the way example. you want to. Sorry, Go ahead. A perfect, no, a perfect example of what you're just saying. So, Elisa, who I believe is a recent basic graduate on online, she per, she personally prefers raffia over ribbons. But since she's been with us, um, you always make them look so luxurious, and now she's starting to change her mind. You know, I actually, it's funny you say that, Elisa, because um, I actually got raffia out because I prefer to use raffia over bind wire, but I forgot, and so it was sitting over there, and the bind wire was closer, so I used the bind wire. But yes, um, I am a fan of raffia. That's partly because as a child, my grandfather raised raspberries, and we used raffia to tie up the raspberry canes. And so there's just sort of a sentimental side of raffia. Now, if Grandpa knew what I paid for ornamental raffia, he'd be rolling in his grave. But um, yeah, we used raffia to tie up the raspberry canes. So now I've got the collar there. You can see I still need to finish off the rest of the back and cover my bind wire and also make sure that it stays in place. So I just take more of this extra wide ribbon. Okay, you've got about two minutes. If you've got questions, ask away, because I'm gonna tie this off and I'm gonna hold it up and show you and then we're kinda done because it's time to go home, enjoy the flowers that are in my house, spend some time enjoying life, and I'll have to go through comments and look at that, but it's time for you to get out there too and do something you love. Can't do just watching Leanne. You also have to get out there and do so that you have part of the fun. Again, if you've not been to flower school, come join us. If you haven't shared this video yet, take a moment, share it. If you're thinking about the Flower Lovers Club, join us. I'm just going to kind of cut these flat because it's so wide the dovetail wouldn't look so great. So I'm just cutting it flat and then tucking it right back up on itself. And since it's wired, it just sort of holds in there and looks like it's ruched a bit. Gives it just a little decorative knot. And it gives that lovely presentation. What do you think? Do you like that? I love these kind of bouquets. They just make me happy. You make me happy. I hope I make you happy. If you've got questions, go ahead and type them in. We'll look at it later too, so that if you put a question in and we haven't answered it yet, one of us will go back and take a look. If you're thinking about flower school, you have questions about it, send us a private message, pick up the telephone, send a carrier pigeon. I don't know. There's so many different ways to communicate now. But for now, I just want to say thank you to each of you. Thank you to Caledonia. Thank you to Susie. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Marisa. And thank you to you for joining us on this hour. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being part of the collaboration. We'll see you all next week, same time, 3 o'clock Pacific time. And it's either good afternoon, good evening, good morning, or good middle of the night. But for now, I say goodbye and get out there and do something you like.